Okay, we have a fully recharged battery and uh, what I'd like to do at this point is uh, really just uh, play around with it a little bit. Uh, giving you a feeling uh, for the amount of current that the battery can actually output. And we're talking uh, maximums here. Um, you'll see that the voltage will essentially crash uh, just uh, uh, very low anyway. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how low it's going to go, but uh, uh, what I'd like to do is start it at... Uh, we'll see if it'll... Uh, output an amp at some voltage here and see if it'll actually uh, if it will actually be capable of doing that. Um, as I say this is more just uh, uh, for a bit of fun and uh, experimentation. So let's uh, let's uh, start that and see what happens. Okay, uh, it's now uh, at an amp, and our voltage, of course, uh, has come down quite low to 0.363 volts. But as you'll also see, uh, the voltage is fairly stable even at this high load. We're going down by uh, uh, millivolts uh, over uh, a few seconds, so it's... Uh, it's actually holding its own, which uh, uh, is uh, is quite interesting to me. Uh, we've clocked uh, six milliwatt hours and sixteen milliamp hours, and uh, in previous tests like this that I've done, playing around with these cells. Uh, you'll see, because of the high current we're drawing, at least high in my opinion, the milliamp hours is, is going to uh, 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 rise pretty quickly. Uh, and that's simply because uh, we're uh, uh, pulling uh, a fair amount of current over uh, a given amount of time. And uh, so the longer this runs at that high current, our capacity is simply going to uh, clock up pretty quickly. Uh, whereas, of course, the energy, which is uh, uh, watts in essence, uh, not watts in essence, it's, it's watts over time. Uh, and that's a multiplication, obviously, uh, of the voltage and the current. So you can see it right here, an amp times 0.32 initially, and we're getting 0.32 watts. Uh, that's a straight multi multiplication. Uh, uh, and that in terms of uh, uh, the milliwatt hours, uh, uh, it, it will clock that at a, at a far lower rate. Uh, uh, and it's essentially one of the reasons this is a better uh, indication, the energy indication, energy out is a, is a better indication of uh, really the capabilities of the battery. Um, it's power. So, uh, where are we? We're at 0 0.305 volts. Uh, we're uh, still at an amp and it's still hanging in there and uh, uh, I think that's uh, that's a pretty interesting uh, result. Um, what I'm going to do here, uh, and I haven't done this before, let's go up by another 200 milliamps or 1.2 amps. Now we've uh, crashed down to 0.154 volts. But it's still outputting that uh, uh, the the current requested. Uh, now any battery, if you load it uh, uh, significantly like this is being loaded, uh, the the voltage will drop. Uh, it's just the physics of the of the chemistry and physics of the battery. I think it's it's just interesting. Ah, okay. 
this is also a for anybody who runs these uh, EBD USB plus loads and runs this uh, software on them. Uh, this is a recurring artifact or failure or uh, it's something to do either with the software or perhaps in the electronic load itself where the uh, uh, you'll get these uh, increases in voltage and, and drops in current at particular voltages. Uh, when I'm running these kinds of currents, it typically happens in the in the low kind of 0.1 volt range. Uh, under less load, it'll happen around the 0.536 milliamps. Uh, sorry, volts. And uh, it's it's irritating, but it's expected. It's got nothing to do with the battery itself. Uh, we're dropping in voltage here pretty uh, readily, so I'm going to go back down to an amp. And there the load uh, recalibrated or, or did whatever it does. I haven't researched this uh, to any great degree, so I'm not quite sure why it does that. Nevertheless, uh, I'm going to adjust this back to an amp, uh, just so that the program doesn't uh, kick out here. Uh, my cutoff voltage is zero, so you know, we've got a little bit of room, but... Uh, so at an amp that brings us back to uh, 0.217 uh, uh, for the moment uh, in terms of volts. And, uh, and we're still falling, but at that, uh, at that load it's a pretty respectable uh, uh, level of voltage drop over time. So in essence, I thought I'd simply share that with you. Uh, I think it's interesting that uh, this little cell, uh, two inch by two inch uh, uh, cell, uh, uh, iron carbon with an iron two uh, chloride electrolyte, uh, is able to provide that kind of current. The fact that it can provide the current uh, speaks in a small way, perhaps towards the cell's internal resistance or uh, uh, it's you know general uh, capabilities to provide uh, to provide those kinds of uh, load currents, and that and the load itself here is 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 resetting again, bobbling. Um, I'll have to look into this to to get a better appreciation for what this is actually doing. Um, but for the time being, I'm going to uh, let's bring that down to uh, 800 milliamps. And we're at uh, 0.3 volts at 800 milliamps at this point. Uh, and uh, I'll just let that run uh, for a little bit and we'll keep an eye on it. But uh, essentially one of the things uh, that I find very curious about uh, this particular battery cell, the uh, iron carbon cell, is... Uh, and I'm kind of throwing that out uh, to uh, whoever might be watching. Uh, uh, I'm I'm a little uh, unsure as to how to actually calculate uh, the uh, watt hours uh, per kilogram on a cell like this. Um, uh, for one basic reason, and that's uh, uh, because the positive electrode, the carbon felt. Uh, it's not involved in the uh, chemistry. It's not involved in the uh, the reaction between the iron uh, steel wool uh, negative electrode and the electrolyte itself. Uh, it really simply provides a reaction site uh, for the the positive half reaction, and uh, uh, that would tend to say that uh, in order to calculate a watts. Uh, per uh, watt hours per kilogram, uh, you have to factor in uh, either uh, some characteristic of the electrolyte, its mass, um, or uh, the mass of the ions that are uh, taking place at uh, 
uh, taking the uh, the ions whose that are involved in the reaction that's taking place at each electrode. Um, I'm not uh, a chemist, and uh, although I have a, a uh, uh, some appreciation for the chemistry involved, uh, I'm I'm a little doubtful how to go about uh, calculating a, a, a watt hours watt hour per kilogram. You have to remember that the total mass of the uh, uh, active materials uh, is two grams, and as I showed uh, in the first video, uh, when we have a I think it was about 265 or 267 uh, milliwatt hours out of that tiny cell, small cell. Um, if you simply use the, the, the two grams mass of the active materials, uh, uh, you essentially get something in the range of uh, uh, you know, 130, uh, uh, two or three uh, uh, watt hours per kilogram. Um, and that uh, that's not really realistic, uh, given. Uh, well, I won't get into the the, the you know the, uh, the the actual chemistry at this point, but uh, there's something wrong in terms of that basic calculation, simply from the point of view that the carbon is not involved in this reaction. Uh, chemically, uh, it does provide uh, a site for, the, as I said, the uh, the positive half reaction to uh, to uh, uh, to occur, uh, and the surface area of the carbon. The more surface area there is there, the the more sites, uh, the, the the more electrolyte, uh, 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 the more the electrolyte can react. Um, okay, we're. Dropping down pretty rapidly here in voltage. Uh, I'm going to see if I've got the time to let's drop that down to 600 milliamps, and we're back up to 0.3 of a volt. So, if anybody has uh, a better appreciation for what's going on uh, in uh, in this kind of cell. Um, uh, and uh, with respect to calculating a, a watt hour per kilogram value for uh, for something like this, uh, uh, I'd appreciate hearing from uh, from anybody who um, has some insights uh, into that. So the battery is uh, certainly uh, reaching a, a point of discharge now that. Uh, our voltage curves here are uh, are very curved, <laughs> and they're, so they're they're plummeting fairly uh, fast. Even though we've reduced our uh, loading on the battery at this point to 600 milliamps, um, just through past experience, if we start to, if we we get to around 300 milliamps, uh, that's voltage level is uh, a little bit more sustainable. This is 0.6 volts, 300 milliamps. Uh, and uh, we'll, uh, we should see a, a slightly more stable voltage level at this particular uh, load current. Uh, we're at 51 uh, milliwatt hours, uh, 203 milliamp hours. Again, the discrepancy between the two readings is, is really uh, uh, the fault of what I'm doing here, uh, uh, driving uh, a lot of current over a given time, which gives us our milliamp hour uh, high reading and uh, and. Uh, the the voltage times the uh, current uh, it gives us essentially a uh, uh, a more realistic view of what the what the battery is actually uh, doing.
So as you see, we're uh, we're still dropping, obviously, uh, but uh, uh, we're at a little bit. Uh, we're loading the cell at a point where it's a it's a little bit more stable in terms of its uh, voltage. And if we keep dropping that to a uh, a more reasonable value, 200 milliamps, uh, 0.744 volts. And uh, that's actually uh, rising a little bit there. So anyway, I uh, I hope uh, somebody found that interesting. I I did. I'm going to uh, bring this down again to a uh, hundred uh, milliamps this time. And at that load level, we uh, jump up to 0.874 volts. And uh, I'm going to leave it there for, uh, for a while, uh, or actually until it discharges. And uh, I think given uh, past experience, this will probably run for... Uh, certainly uh, an hour anyway, uh, although uh, given the loading that we've applied to it, uh, we have drained this uh, cell uh, considerably, so it, uh, uh, what it will do is a little bit up uh, for debate at this point. So we'll leave it there, and thanks for watching.